In this video, we're going to learn about root parameters and root constraints. In the previous video, we have created a rootable component, which is this added server component. We are able to navigate to it, but we don't know which server we're editing. From this server's page, we need to be able to pass a server ID to this rootable component, and that's what we are going to do in this video. Now, the way to pass information from one page to the next one is by using the URL here, and that's called the root parameter. For example, if I want to add it to server number one, I can say servers slash one, then it should take me to the edit server screen where I can edit server number one. Right now, it says no web page was found at this address. That means the resource that the URL is pointing to does not actually exist. And that's why it's spitting out HTTP 404 error. Currently, in our managed servers, no matter which link you click on, it always go to the servers.edit. So that's one of the first things we want to change. Right? So this is, has nothing to do with root parameters yet, but let's prepare our application. Let's go to our servers.razor page component here. And currently, we're using this URL. So in order to pass the correct URL over to the next page, uh, we need to do slash servers slash the server ID. We can use implicit razor expression here. I'm going to say server dot server ID. By doing this, if we rerun our application, we have our application ready for working with root parameters. So let's go back to manage servers. And if we hover our mouse over the edit button, you can see at the bottom left corner, we have slash servers and then slash the correct ID. But if I click on it, it says 404, right? So that's why we need to make our added server component rootable to this place and be able to accept the root parameter, right? So this part of the URL is called the root parameter. So let's go to edit server component. Currently, it's accepting this URL pattern. We need to make it accept the root parameter. So the way to make the URL part accept the root parameter is to use the curly brace. And then you can even see that the curly brace change color. And here, you want to call it, you can call it anything, but here I want to call it ID. And then in the C sharp code, this part of the section that says add code and then curly braces, this is the C sharp code block. You work with C sharp in this code block. So this code block cannot have any HTML. And in here, we need to map this to our C sharp property. And therefore, we're going to create a C sharp property. Here, I'm going to use string type because I did not specify what type this is. So therefore, I can only use string type because string type can accept anything. Right. So here, I, I can call it ID this way. So with lowercase i, or I can call it id this way with capitalized i. As long as, as long as they match letter by letter, then they match. So that means this property should be able to accept this parameter. So here it's just complaining that it's non nullable. So we can add a question mark to recognize that this id sometimes can be null. Okay. So by doing this is not enough. We need to also use a C sharp property here to decorate this property and saying this is a root parameter. So there are two things you need to pay attention. The first one is that the parameter name should match case insensitive. And then the second thing is you need to use the parameter attribute to decorate your property. We had everything ready. So now we just need to display the ID here, just to see whether we actually can accept the parameter or not. Okay, let's give it a try by rerun the application. And let's go over here. So automatically, it's already showing number three here, right? So let's go back to manage servers, let's click on the first one. Now it's showing number one, and number one here. That means our C sharp property is accepting this root parameter correctly. Okay, let's try another one, number four. It's showing number four. That's the concept of root parameter and how to accept the root parameter with our C-sharp code. That's pretty good. 
However, if I do something like, let's say I change the URL back to edit and I hit enter, I see edit. That's pretty weird because I'm expecting integer here. It should not actually accept any type of string. It should only be integer because I want to just pass in the server ID here. So that comes to our second topic here in this lecture, which is root parameter constraint or root constraint. So a constraint will limit the type of the root parameter here. Currently, it is just a string. Now we use string to accept everything, but sometimes not ideal. In this case, we don't want to map this rootable component to slash servers slash anything. We just want to map it to slash servers slash integer number. So we can use a root constraint by say colon, and then you can see there is already a list of type that you can use for limiting the root parameter. In our case, it's going to be integer. And after we change this to integer, we also need to change this type to integer in order to match these two parameters. And now we can rerun the application and see what happens. All right, so let's go to manage servers and let's go to edit. So we're still able to map to the correct URL here. However, if I do slash edit, then I get a HTTP 404. That means this URL cannot be mapped to any page component. And that's correct behavior. Right? That's what we want. Before I finish this video, I want to show you this Microsoft documentation, which is talking about the root constraint. And it gives the list of types that you can use for root constraint. It's not any type. It's just these types because you don't want to pass in very fancy data through the URL anyways. Another concept I did not cover is optional parameters. So for example, here is a root parameter. And if you want to make it optional, you can use a question mark here. When you use a question mark here, you don't have to specify this. If you only specify this in the browser, it's going to map to this component. But if you do specify this, it's also going to map to this component. It just means that one has text, the other one does not have text. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.